my tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. Today's video is going to be addressing another video request that has been in the queue for a few months. And this is actually a very simple one. And it comes from JJ Miller, 1980. And this was posted on the audiobook shelf video that I released. And it says, great video, thank you. Audiobook shelf also has an app for Android and iOS. Any chance of getting a video going over how to expose this container externally so that we can access the content from our phones. So basically exposing the app and then connecting it using the iOS or Android applications. So let's get to that. The first thing that we're going to do here is I have spin up another container of audio bookshelf here in my lab. And my lab is being exposed to the public internet and I'm going to go over how you do that. So basically the application is accessible at a subdomain that I have that I got with change IP. So it's abs.jlpc.ns01.us and as I'm already using port 443 for my Kubernetes cluster, I am exposing this with HTTPS but on port 8080. So we're going to go through how to set this up. So the application is working. So just to validate, if we go to the IP of the NAS and then we put port 877, then that's directly going to the NAS, getting to the application. So you can see here's in the NAS internally and here's coming from the public internet. So now that we have it running in the NAS on the port 8077, in order for us to uh, expose the application, the first thing that we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be going into the control panel in Synology in there, we're going to be going into where it says Login Portal. And on the Login Portal, we click on Advanced. And then in here, we click on Reverse Proxy. Because the Synology devices come with a reverse proxy. So at this point, we are assuming that you have already done a port forward on your router. So that the port that you want to use to expose it, in my case, is going to be 8080. So from the public internet, anything that comes on 8080 HTTPS, is then sent to my lab NAS. So it's gonna be sent to this IP here. So now that we assume that we have that done, so we have port forwarding enabled, then in the reverse proxy, we're gonna create a new entry, right? And that entry is gonna be looking like this. You're gonna put audio bookshelf here as the name of this entry. And then we're gonna say that we're gonna be retrieving HTTPS traffic from the public internet. And then we're gonna be putting the domain that we have for this application. So my subdomain that I have from change IP is this one and I put a sub subdomain on this. So the host is this one. So this is what I have to put here, abs.jlpc.ns01.us. And this is just gonna be for the video. So if you try to access it, you won't get to it later, just letting you know. And then I'm gonna be expecting the traffic to come on port 8080. If you don't have 443, used then you can use 443 and then it'll make it easier for you but in my case i'm going to use 8080 for this because i'm already using 443 which is a default http s port and now we're going to tell it okay this traffic that you get on these parameters i want you to pass it locally to the to the nas so that's why it says local host and it's going to be on http because i am not using https internally so i'm doing the termination of the https and I'm gonna pass it to the IP of the application in the NAS, which is 8077. So it gets it from the outside and sends it to the right port in the NAS so that the application can handle that traffic. And that's all that we need. You can save here, and that's gonna give, uh, give you this reverse proxy rule here that is gonna grab that traffic that your router sends to your NAS, and then from there sends it to the container. So now we should be able to access it, but what's the problem here? If we access it directly like that, it's going to be using the default Synology certificate. So it's going to give us a prompt saying, you know, the connection is not secure. This doesn't match the name and all that. So in order for us to fix that, we need to go into the security tab here. We're going to go into certificate and you should not have this one. You should only have the Synology one or any other that you may have requested, right? But in this case, if we go into settings, we'll see this selected. Like, for our application, it's going to be the Synology certificate, and we don't want that. So in order for us to be able to change it to this new certificate, we need to request that certificate first. So this is, I already requested it. 
So this is what you, you should get at the end. But in order to request a certificate from Let's Encrypt, you click on add, and then you have to say, add a new certificate. And then you put the name of the certificate, for example, ABS. And then you click on get a new certificate from Let's Encrypt. Then you click on next. And then you have to put the domain that you're gonna be using here. So in my case, it was ABS, JLPC, NS0, and the US. And I copy this and put it also here. And then you have to put your email here. So you fill out this information, click done. It is, it is gonna initiate the request to Let's Encrypt. And once Let's Encrypt is able to validate that that domain actually points to, points to this machine, then it's gonna give you this certificate that you can see here. Once you have your certificate, you come here and you select it and you go into settings, and then you make sure you, you change this from Synology to the new certificate for the application that you're trying to expose and you click OK. And now we should be able to, with the reverse proxy, grab that information that our router sends to our NAS and pass it to the container, but also do an SSL termination on the secure connection when it gets to our NAS. So the NAS gets HTTPS, terminates the connection there, passes that information in plain text, so HTTP, to the container, and then the container replies, and the NAS again envelops all of that in HTTPS and sends it to the client. That way we get a secure connection. So this is all that you need to expose the application in the NAS. Remember, you also have to expose using port forwarding from your router to the NAS. Once you have that, then you should be able to go into the domain that you specified, port 8080 in my case. If you're, if you're using 443, then you don't need to put a port. You just leave it HTTPS with nothing. And then that should get you to the application. So let me just log out, and this is what you would see. And in here, then you have to log in with your account. And then you get to the application here so that's perfect then in here we can see that we can access it from the outside for all meaning from the public internet and we can see our content and everything so this is good now the next thing that i'm going to cover is how we set this up in an ios device i don't have an android device with me right now i am an ios user mainly so i'm going to show you how you do it with ios but there's several uh, options that you can pick and there's options for android too that basically follow the same thing. Uh, I would say uh, I was looking for applications to do this and the one that mentions directly audio bookshelf and it says that it's an audio bookshelf client is a paid application so I am not going to be using that. That application if I believe is named uh, shelf player. So I'm going to be using another application which is called Plapa. You can find it for free on the app store and that's what we're going to be using to set this up so let's get to my phone and do the actual setup all right so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to go into the app store we're going to be looking for audio bookshelf and it's going to bring us up a few applications here like i said you have plapa you have shelf player but i'm not going to be using that because that costs five dollars i don't know why and there's others here but yeah like i said let's go with plapa so let's download this and once the application is downloaded, we should see it on our screen. We can click on Plapa, and then you have basically here, it tells you you can connect it to either Jellyfin MB or Audio Bookshelf. So in my case, I have an Audio Bookshelf server, so I'm gonna select Audio Bookshelf, and then I'm gonna say HTTP, leave it as HTTPS, and then I'm gonna put the domain that I specified for my application, which was ABS JLPC ns01.us but I have to put the colon port 8080 because I'm not using the default port for HTTPS and then for the username I'm going to put audio bookshelf and then for the password for the sake of the video I just put password so that's going to be fine then I'm going to click on the login button then it gives me information about the release notes so I can click on the dismiss and then it tells me I have two libraries in my server. What do I want to see? Currently, I don't have anything in my audiobooks, so I'm going to click where it says podcasts, and voila. Here we have the podcast that I have in the lab, which is Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. And I have a few episodes here 
then as you can see it's working fine so we can try it by clicking one episode and click on listen or in my case resume and as you can see it has it it plays it on my phone so everything is working fine so this is a short video but it's pretty straightforward and i hope that solves your problem and your curiosity here so if you like the video hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you have not done so also share the videos if you think somebody else might benefit from watching the videos leave me comments in the comment section below because videos like this one i create them based on requests that people make on my videos and in the comment section so feel free to comment i try to respond as soon as possible to the comments from people and i try to help you out if you're having issues and additionally you should have noticed that there was no ad on my video i am not monetizing my channel i don't want to bombard people with ads but that also means that I do not get any money in the effort that I put in making these videos. So if you like the content and you want to support me, there's going to be a link in the description below to PayPal where you can donate. Or there's going to be also a Bitcoin wallet address where you can donate using Bitcoin if you prefer. And that'll help us to continue focusing on the channel and getting access to more nice, nice things that we can provide you content wise. So that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.